And now it's finally time for the reassembly. I've got everything I need gathered on the workbench, so let's go ahead and get started. The reassembly process will be pretty much the exact reverse of the disassembly. The truck just goes up through that hole in the body over there, and the masking tape saves that from getting coated in paint, so that should have nice electrical contact. The wire I fed through that hole there, and the truck will be held in place by putting that little thing right back where it used to be. And then, take a large flat blade screwdriver, and I just press that down. I'm actually going to do the lamp socket next. That screw there is for adjusting the width so that the light bulb can fit better. I would recommend doing that before putting the socket in or doing any of the soldering. So that can be done outside of the passenger car. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that inside just over the wire. This is the old lamp wire. I have unsoldered that from the rear light bulb contact. And I'm replacing this because it's cracking all around and it's no longer good to use because of that. The new truck already includes a piece of pretend wire, but for anyone that needs to replace the wire alone, 22 or 24 gauge works well. Now to get this onto the new wire, just place that hole over the new wire, take the soldering iron, and place that on top of there until the solder melts and goes together. And the socket is mounted back on there just like that. And the light bulb is right in that side there. And Lionel trains like a little more power than Marks or American Flyers, so I use 18 volt light bulbs. Right now would actually be a good time to do a quick track test to make sure the light bulb works and doesn't flicker at all. And guess what? The test was a good idea. That roller there is larger than the original Lionel and was shorting out with the axle there. So I've bent that in just a little bit to give more clearance and now I'm going to do another test to make sure everything is working properly. Just a quick test back and forth around some curves and straight pieces all this needs. And I see almost no flickering in that light is about as good as I can ever get with one truck roller, so now we can go ahead and move on to the next part. The light bulb's fragile, so I'll go ahead and remove that while I'm doing the rest of the reassembly. Next up is the air tanks on the frame. Those, I just hold that in place with my thumb and press down on the tab with the large flat blade screwdriver so that's nice and secure inside then do the same for the other one and now it's holding on nice and firm next I'll put on the couplers just slip that back through there through that hole I take my curved pliers, grab that with them, hold on to that real tight while I twist the coupler the other way. Some paint will probably be damaged while doing this. It can be touched up when it's all done. And you want that tab to be um, bent pretty much at a 90 degree angle from where it was. Next up is the brass steps. Those are fed through four slots in the frame. And then take my curved pliers again, grab those, and it's easiest to twist these in place. 
You don't have to go quite 90 degrees. That there's uh, enough to hold it in place. I've only bent three of the tabs to hold it in place. I found that that's all that's needed. And that fourth one, it would just be too much of a risk for damaging the paint since it's so close to the door there. And when these are twisted, they should be in the direction that the door swings so that the door can clear them more easily. Next comes the doors. Before I put these in, I bent those tabs back at about a 45 degree angle. And the detail goes with the recess pointing inside. Those two tabs are a tight fit in there, so you may have to work them in with the pliers to make them slide in all the way. And once those are in, I bent those tabs back straight. I take the long needle nose pliers here, grab onto those, and carefully roll them until they're a nice little circle again. Those are nice and rolled up now, and the door can be opened and closed. You still don't always open and close very freely or straightly, but the main thing is that it's on. Has to go inside are the window inserts. Just take that, angle it back through the top there, and now I'll gently press that on over the tabs. Now to bend all those tabs, I'm using this piece of metal here. It's about a half inch in diameter, and it should be no thicker than this, because it needs to fit under that area there to bend the tabs underneath. This part's a little bit hard to record but I've got the piece under there over a tab so then I just try and bend that until I know it's all the way down in there and you can see there that I have the tabs bent over on the bottom just using that block there and that works really nicely at this point because of rust and breakage that tab there is the only one left for the upper section of the windows the combination of that and the three tabs on the bottom is still holding it securely in place, so as long as I don't mess with that anymore, it should be just fine. That's it for all the inside parts. All that's left to do before putting the roof on is a little bit of touch-up paint here and there. I've got the roof placed on top of there now. All that's left is to put in that final screw. And since that screw was a little bit ugly on top compared to the rest of the car, I went ahead and painted it with the same red paint as the rest of the body. And there it is, all nice and finished, ready to be run and displayed. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video series to be both helpful and informative.